Alright guys, how's it going? Some of you, like myself, may be a little bit reticent about upgrading to Windows 10, especially after reading about all the spyware stuff and how difficult it is to downgrade back to 7 or 8 or whatever one you're using if you don't like it. What this video is going to do is allow you to try out Windows 10 by dual booting it alongside your current Windows and that basically gives you the choice of what to run at startup. If you're not keen on 10, you can simply format the drive and get back to using your old Windows. There are one or two steps involved in this, it's not complicated though, it's just a case of going through it step by step, which is exactly what I'm going to do. The first thing you're going to have to do is go on to Microsoft's website. As usual, all of these links will be in the description below. But this is exactly where you need to be. Get Windows 10, it says upgrade now. You're not going to click on that. What you're going to do is create a USB DVD or ISO, which is basically a file that goes onto a DVD disc. In my case, I'll be using a USB drive, but I will also take a look at installing it on a DVD. So you're going to either need to have a DVD drive or a USB flash drive. And what you're going to do is click on this, download the tool now. It should download pretty fast. Now. We're going to run it. It can sometimes take a little while here because it's doing stuff in the background. It's called the Media Creation Tool. So you can look for that in your downloads if you can't find it. I'm not entirely sure why, but it takes an awful long time to start up on my PC. Here we go. Right now, just accept Microsoft's bullshit terms. Now what we're going to do is create an installation media for another PC. So click on that. Now it's got a set recommended options. In order to change them, you've got to uncheck that box. There may be a few different additions depending on which part of the world you are in. This end stuff is the European version. It's got less features like media player, stuff like that, because of Microsoft being bad in the past and their anti-competitive thing. It's up to you if you don't want to install media player, Skype, all that stuff. For the purposes of this, I'm just going to go ahead with Windows 10, United Kingdom language, and you can choose whether you want 32, 64 bit or both. I will be going with 64 bit. So click on next. It says make sure the edition you've selected matches. Just click on OK. Right now here's your choice between the USB flash drive or the ISO file. And it says you'll need to burn the ISO file to a DVD later. It's nice and simple though. Whichever one of these you choose is going to download the file. If you choose the flash drive, it will automatically install the files to it. If you instead choose the file, you can download it to your desktop, at which point you can then choose to burn it. Probably by right clicking and burn disk image. I don't have a DVD burner, so I'm not going to do that right now. But that's pretty simple. Now I'm going to do it on the USB flash drive. It needs to be at least 3 GB in size. Click on Next, and it's going to automatically search for USB drives. You can check your computer, and you can see here, I've got my Windows drive C, Windows 7 C drive, I've got a media drive, I've also got an empty Windows 10 drive right now, and here is my USB drive. It's 8 GB in size, and it is indeed drive F. So click on Next. Now it's downloading Windows 10, and after it's finished downloading, it will automatically install the files onto the zip drive. Right, so that's it downloaded pretty fast on my uber Swedish internet. When it's at this stage, it's basically creating the bootable drive, yeah, the bootable USB drive. This part here actually takes longer for me than downloading the 3 gigabyte does, because I'm using quite an old, slow USB zip drive. You might just want to make a cup of tea while it does this part. And we are finally done. So we're just going to click on finish. And now you should either have a CD or DVD drive with a Windows disk or you're going to have one of these USB drives. If you double click on it, you should see the setup. You can actually run the Windows 10 setup from here. However, it will simply overwrite your current Windows version. That's not what we're going to do. We are going to create a new partition or install it onto a new hard drive or solid state drive. Now what I should say is, before you start this next part, make sure you've got all your important stuff backed up, either to DVD, to USB, or some other drive, yeah? Because you can lose your data doing this. I've done it in the past, yeah? That's why I now have two identical solid state drives, because I lost my solid state drive doing this before, and I lost my Mass Effect save along with it. So when I'm saying, you know, back up your stuff, I really do mean it, because I have lost important stuff by not doing that. With that warning out of the way, this is what we're going to do. 
Now this next part really depends on what spare drives you've got or what spare space you've got on your hard drives or SSD drives. I actually have two solid state drives, two identical solid state drives. So the smart option for me was simply create a separate Windows 10 drive. When you first install a new drive in Windows, it won't actually show up here. You need to right click on your computer, then click on manage. It brings up computer management. If you then click on disk management, it will bring up a list of the disks and it will automatically say we need to initialize this drive. Just let it go ahead and do that and you'll be able to give it a name. I called it Windows 10 because my main drive is called Windows 7. That's what makes sense. Right, right now though, what I'm going to do is rename this drive to Spare SSD because I reckon most of you are only going to have a single solid state drive. As usual, I would really recommend installing Windows on a solid state drive. However, if you're just testing out Windows, by all means, try it out on a normal hard drive. That's what I did for a little while. It's going to be pretty sluggish to load up, but it's absolutely fine for testing Windows 10. You're going to need about 100 gigabyte free. So this is only going to work on 250 gigabyte plus drives. You're not going to be able to run two operating systems on a 120 gigabyte solid state drive. You just can't do it. And the way we're going to do it is create a partition using a really nice little program called Mini Tool Partition Manager. Again, the link will be in the description below. All you want to do is click on download. There is a free edition which works absolutely perfectly. So you're just going to download it from CNET, it says here. Now you click on download now. And then you just install the program. Next, next. Next again. Now I already installed it, this is why it's telling me it's here, yeah, but you won't have this. Next, you can create a desktop icon if you want, and install it. Now you can do this within Windows as well, but it's really quite crap, so by all means, find a program like this mini tool, Partition Wizard, it really works well. And once it's up and running, click Launch Application. Now this maybe looks a little bit complicated, but in actuality, it's really simple. You've got all your drive letters here, so there's E, the spare solid state drive. My Windows 7 drive's there, and this is the drive that I am going to split. I am actually going to put it onto my C drive, and to do that, all you have to do is right click on the drive, and choose split. Now like I said, you need about 100 gigabyte. It's very simple, all you have to do is move your mouse to this part, and you can choose how much you want to go to. So my Windows 7 drive on the left, the C drive, would end up at 108 gigabyte if I put 124 gigabyte into my new drive. However, I'm only going to go with 100. There we go. And that's going to leave 133 on my C drive and create a new 100 gigabyte G drive. You can also put in the exact amounts here if you want. Click on OK. And you now have a second partition ready to be made on your main drive. Now if you want, you can also right click on it now and change the label, and I'm going to call it Win10. Click on OK, and all you have to do now is click on Apply. You can follow these instructions, and then click on Yes. Now because C is my Windows drive, it's going to have to close down the PC to complete this part, yeah? So make sure you've got everything saved, and then restart your PC, and it will go through this automatically, creating the partition, and then reloading Windows. So now I'm going to do that by clicking on Restart Now. Right, so with a bit of luck, the mini partition wizard did not kill your solid state drive, and you're back in Windows, click on computer, and you can see my C drive is now down to 132 gigabytes, and I have a new drive over here, Windows 10, 100 gigabyte empty G drive, and I still have my little USB drive which holds Windows 10. This next part is a little bit tricky, and knowing exactly what to do depends on what motherboard you've got. You know that when you start up your PC, you sometimes see a message that says press F2 or delete to enter the BIOS, or if you're lucky in this case, you'll have something that says press F11 or press F12 to enter the boot menu. Now here's one here that says press F2 to enter setup, which would be the BIOS, or F12 to change the boot device. So this would be quite nice. You may even have an older one that says something like this down here, press F11 to enter the boot menu. <laughs> I don't know why this stuff isn't standard. On my PC, I need to press F8 to get the boot menu. If you don't know what the key is, you need to enter the BIOS, which is either going to be delete or F2, guaranteed. Maybe escape, yeah? And then you can see something like this down here, the boot menu, which you can either click on or press F8 in this case. And what you're going to get is something like this. 
So you're going to restart your PC now, you're going to try to find the boot menu and you're going to run from either the CD-ROM or the DVD-ROM. It may have a strange name, you can sort of figure out which one it is though, hopefully. Or you're going to run it from the USB zip if you save the files to the USB drive. And hopefully that will start the Windows 10 setup. Sometimes the keyboard won't work at the start though, so you maybe need to move your keyboard around some USB sockets at the back. This is really tricky this part, but it may actually run automatically. If you're using a CD-ROM and you put the disc in, if you're lucky, it will run from that automatically. Some PCs do, some PCs don't. It's just too hard to say. If you're finding it difficult to get the boot menu up and running, just leave a comment below and I'll try to fix it for you. I'm going to take you through this step by step and there's quite a lot of slides here. If you're only doing this with one PC, it really might help to print these out rather than try to memorise it. Or if you're running it on a laptop next to you, that's fine obviously. Most of it's pretty self-explanatory, but some of it may be a little bit difficult. But anyway, here is the first slide that you're going to see once you've got the Windows set up up and running. It's pretty self-explanatory, yeah? So you're going to click on next after you've chosen your language, your time currency, and your keyboard. Now, this is a really bad photograph, but you can see that you simply just click on Install Now. It's going to take you to the Activate Windows screen. Right now, just click on I don't have a product key. You can enter it later on. If you've got it at hand, then by all means, enter it now. Click on Next. Now you need to choose whichever version of Windows 7 you've got and make sure it's the same as what you're going to choose Windows 10, yeah? So simply put, if you've got Windows 7 Pro, choose Windows 10 Pro. I think that's the same if you had Ultimate as well. If you had Windows 7 Home, you choose Windows 10 Home. Click on Next. Once again, you've got to accept the license, just tick the box and click on Next. Now this is where you choose the type of installation. In most cases, you would just upgrade it. But in our case, we're going to be choosing the custom Install Windows Only Advanced option which takes us to this screen. Here you can see all the drives that are on my PC. And we can quite clearly see here that Drive 1 has two partitions, Windows 7 and Windows 10. In that case, we are obviously going to be clicking on Windows 10 and then clicking on Next. And that's it done. You are now installing Windows 10. Once it's done installing, it may be restart and you might see this screen. Just click on Windows 10 or let it run automatically after about 30 seconds. Before you run it the first time, you've got to select a bunch of options and settings. I really recommend you do this rather than clicking this Use Express Settings. You want to click on Customize Settings because Windows 10 is full of spyware which you want to get rid of at the start. If you want to read through that, you go ahead. I'm just going to click everything to off. However, do note that there is a final option at the bottom. You need to scroll down on the right hand side and turn the final location option off as well. After that, you get to more network settings. It's up to you what you want to do here. I've just switched them all off. I would be particularly wary of this bottom one. And there are yet more options to get rid of, which again, I would fully recommend switching all of them off. Again, it should probably restart. Again, choose Windows 10. Right, there's not long to go now. Simply choose whether or not you own the PC or it is your organisations. Click on Next. Right, this photo is a bit blurry, but you should be able to see what it says. If you've got a Microsoft account, by all means, enter your Microsoft account. And that's how you will sign in to Windows 10 using that account. You'll probably find that you end up doing that anyway, because in order to use the App Store, you're going to have to have one. In order to download Microsoft games, you're going to need one. For now, though, I just decided to skip this step which then allows you to create an account for the PC. Type in whatever name you want, give yourself a password and a password hint. Click on Next. And apparently there's going to be lots of great features to get excited about. And that should finally be you in Windows 10. Right, so I'm going to finish this one off simply by showing you how to change one or two little things that will improve the loading up time. And also, if you want to get rid of Windows 10, I'll show you how to do that now. What you want to do is go into your Start menu and type in msconfig and press Enter. Now, if you click on boot, you can see here Windows 10 and Windows 7 Professional. It says one is the current OS and one is the default OS. So the default OS is the one that will load automatically after 30 seconds are done, yeah? But you might think 30 seconds is a little bit too long. So why not just make this time out 10 seconds? Click apply and now it will load up Windows 10 automatically after only 10 seconds. You maybe even want to make that 5 seconds. If you want, you can also remove your Windows 10 from the boot. And you should do this before you delete the Windows 10 partition. I'm going to do that now by simply clicking delete. While I've got this Windows 10 partition highlighted, you can see now that the Windows 7 Professional OS is now the default OS. I will now, however, have to click apply. When you click OK, it will want to restart your PC. Just go ahead and do that. Right, so we're back in Windows 7 again. The last thing to do, if you want to get rid of Windows 10, simply go into your computer, 
What you probably really want to do is get rid of the partition that you made and add the space back to your C drive here. So to do that we're going to go back into mini partition wizard. Now you're going to go to your Win10 drive, you're going to right click on it and choose delete. It's now unallocated. All you have to do now is right click on your C drive, select move resize and you're going to make it the full size again, 232GB. Click on OK and click apply. Click on yes and this time it does it simply within Windows. All the changes have been applied successfully and we are back to where we started. Maybe you'll end up keeping Windows 10. I'm pretty unconvinced by it so far but I will be taking another look at it after I install it onto my spare solid state drive. As always there's a bunch of links in the description below. Any comments, questions, fire away in the questions below. I'll catch you later guys.